The Lord, Brian Hampton here at Holy Fire Ministries, come to talk to you tonight about what I have titled, When You Seek Me, You Shall Find Me. You know, as we've got a lot of people going through life that they depend on other people to pray for them, uh, they've never really grown up in the Lord, and you know, the reason I'm preaching this is one, one reason because the Lord told me to, and another reason because I've just had so many people tell me this information. It's not like something that I somehow, you know, uh, use telepathic powers to know what they're thinking. They just, they tell me they don't have a prayer life. It's, it's hard for them to pray. It's, it's almost impossible. And it's unfortunate. It's, it's very needful that we all as believers have that relationship with the Lord that we can get in touch with him at any given time that we can you know, get in touch with him. And, and there's nothing wrong with having people pray for you. We all hopefully have spiritual mothers or fathers in the faith that will get a, a prayer for us, uh, through for us sometimes when we just can't seem to get it through. And then there's, you know, sometimes that we just pray for one another. The Bible tells us to. James chapter 5 and verse 16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Uh, and so that's very important. But God's wanting us as individuals to get to the place, to the point that, praise God, we come to him and we uh, adore him. We love him. We spend time with we him. We have fellowship with him. And when we need to get a prayer through, that we can get a prayer through. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 says, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all of your heart. Uh, Matthew 7 verse 8 says, For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. I had a good friend the other day, they told me, and they're 73 years old, and they said, you know, I think to pray, I turn around and I forget that I was going to pray. And I said, well, you know, write it down. Stick it somewhere where you can, you can see it. You know, put time aside to get into prayer and, and fellowship with the Lord and find you a place to go to where you can go and you can pray and leave your phone in the other room because you, if you really want to get into God's presence, you don't need any distractions, any interference. And, you know... We tend to do what it is that we want to do if we can afford it, if we're able to make it happen. We tend to do it. If you know, we want to go somewhere, we go. Uh, you know, when I was young and when you were young and, and you were going out to meet your wife or your girlfriend that became your wife or whatever, but you were enthralled, you were excited, you know, those endorphins were shooting off, and man, you could not wait to get into her presence. And, you know, it was the most exciting thing. And there wasn't nothing going to keep you out of her presence unless, you know, it was out of your control. And God's looking for us to be passionate about Him, that, praise God, we're excited about entering into His presence, that He, he wants to know that we love Him. He wants to talk to us. He wants to help us with our troubles. But, praise God, so many people just do not have a prayer life. And we've got to talk to God if we expect Him to help us. And, you know, you can look around and you can understand why some people seem so spiritually unfit because they do not have a good prayer life with God. I've got this room, and I, I'm just simply saying this because it's it's just an analogy, but I, you know, pray loud when I pray. It's just the way I pray. Uh, it's not the way you have to pray, obviously. It's, it's however you get in touch with the Lord, but you know, I was always wanting to pray, and I, I, I wanted a place where it was air conditioning and heat. So I built this little room, and because my wife was here, and I didn't want to, you know, be, you know, loud and disturb her and disrupt her. And I like to, when I get alone with the Lord, I like to be alone with the Lord. And, you know, when you're praying, I, I don't know if you're that way, but I just like to be alone. I don't like other people hearing what I'm praying. But anyways, I built this little room. I insulated it. I put a little window unit air conditioner, a little space heater, so I can go out there anytime I want if she's here and pray as loud as I want and have air conditioning, have heating. And if she's not here, then I can, I can pray. What I'm trying to tell you that if you want to spend time with God, if you want to get into God's presence, then the only thing that would stop you 
would be your uh, unwillingness to get in there and to do it. Even if you have to go sit in your car and start it up. Even if you have to take a drive, do whatever it takes, but get into the presence of God. Um, Matthew chapter 22 and verse 36, A lawyer asked Jesus, tempting him, Master, which is the greatest commandment in the law? As Jesus said to him, You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And, you know, if he, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. It tells us to take the word of God and to bind them about our neck. Praise God. So, Thomas Keating wrote, The only way to fail at prayer is not to show up. F.B. Meyer said, The greatest tragedy in life is not unanswered prayers, but it is unoffered prayers. The Bible says, Pray without ceasing. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And you know, if you're walking around and your heart is sick and you're walking around and you have no peace, then it's probably because you need to get into the presence of God. And you know, sometimes you see people and they have went through something that is unimaginable. And I imagine that people that aren't saved look at them and they say, how in the world is it that they can have peace in a time like this? And it's because of this scripture that says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. I was listening to a, a sermon that Tim Delana was preaching and uh, he had this one little part in here about what I'm getting ready to get to which is uh, about William Cowper. Uh, but I, I thought this was so necessary because there, there's so many times that you, when you go to people to get them to pray for you, they're not able to come to the phone. They're not available. And they're just times that they just don't have what you need. You know, I watch this television show occasionally and there's these four military people that are on a team and they'll go out and they'll get into a, a, a rough situation and they'll all look to the one guy who is the leader. There's four of them. And, and, the, and he'll sometimes he'll say, well, this is what we need to do or this is what we need to do. And, and then sometimes he'll simply say, I got nothing. And that's a cue to them that you need to start thinking for yourself. You need to come up with something because I don't have the answer right now. And many of them will begin to say, well, well maybe we could do this. Maybe we could do that. But there's sometimes that the people that you count on, they just are, they just don't have what you need because God is your source. He should always be your source. He should always be the one that you go to. They just kind of should just be the backup that help you pray through. But praise God, we need to stop going to the pastor and going to the preacher and going to this one and that one before we go to God. God ought to be the first one that we go to. He ought to be the one that we know who that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could think or ask according to the power of God that works in us. So praise the Lord. Go to those other people. Let them encourage you. But praise God, make sure that you're putting Him first. Make sure you're putting the only one, really, that can turn your situation around. Make sure you're putting Him first. William Cowper was considered a great English poet, but he became temporarily very mentally unstable. He was fearful and depressed. After the death of his mother, at an early age, a great crisis started to hit him, and he could not deal, like so many today, with the anxiety and the fear and the depression. And I'm telling you, man, is it ever hitting the people of God today? It's probably hitting your pastor today, and they just don't show it and don't let you know it. But I'm telling you, uh, anxiety and depression and fear, the devil is fighting mad. But, you know, I'm not telling you that, so you'll be discouraged. I'm just telling you that there is a fight. And if anybody were to say, hey, man, everything's good with me. I don't ever have trouble in that situation. Well, I'd 
to assume that you weren't being honest with me or maybe that you weren't even saved. Because I'm telling you today, you've got people that are solid as a rock, people that you know that are spiritual dynamite, and people that live right and they know how to get in touch with God. And they go into the presence of God and, 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 and have fellowship with the Lord and when they walk out, it's vexation of spirit. And, you know, we remember that Job, I mean, not Job, but uh, Lot, when he was in Sodom and Gomorrah, that it says that he was vexed every day by the atmosphere that he was living in because of the sinfulness and the, the stuff that was going on. And we're living in a very volatile time where there's perversion everywhere and there's the vexation of spirit. And it seems like you can get into God's presence and have a good time and rejoice and walk out of it. And it's like you walk back into the enemy's camp. And I'll just give you a couple of definitions about what the definition of vexation is. It is being annoyed, frustrated, or worried. A suppression of spiritual guidance of the Holy Spirit. It can even cause you to question things that you know to be true. People lately are saying, God, I believe. I believe you, but help thou my unbelief. Going back to William Cowper, the, the great English poet, at the age of 32 years old, thought suicide was his only way out. He tried to take poison to kill himself, but it did not work. He hired a taxi driver to take him to the Thames in London, where he intended to jump out, but the taxi driver grabbed a hold of him and would not let him go. Now, keep in mind that back when he was alive, that there was horse and buggies were your taxi, so it would have been easily, easy for him to jump out of a, a, a buggy. And I imagine that this particular place that they were talking about was a, a narrow place that probably had a great drop off if you were to, to, to jump off. So he tried to commit suicide by jumping to his death. The next morning, he took a knife and he fell on it and the blade broke. You know, I think maybe God just didn't want him to go, right? Because he was doing everything that he could to try to take himself out and he could not. Two weeks later, he hung himself, but they found him dangling unconscious. They cut him down and revived him, and at this point, he was placed into an asylum for 18 months at the age of 32 years old and was committed to a psych ward. So this guy was desperate. He wanted to die. He had no hope. He was in despair, and he was ready to do what he thought would end his misery, which would be to end his life. However, God put him under the care of a Christian doctor named Dr. Cotton. Probably won't forget that name, Dr. Cotton. And listen to this. Finally, one day... In his locked cell, after being there for 18 months, God opened up the windows of heaven, and what nobody could do for him, God did for him. And he writes these words. He says, Happily, finally I shook off my fetters, and I started to see the free mercy of God in Christ. I flung myself into a chair near the window, and I saw the Bible that Dr. Cotton gave to me. I turned it over to Romans chapter 3 and verse 24, and I read these words. All are justified freely by His grace, and though and through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of an atonement through the shedding of His blood and to be received by faith. And He says this, and immediately, this is what William said, I received strength to believe the beams of the Son of Righteousness shone on me, and I saw the sufficiency of the blood of Jesus, and that I was pardoned by the blood. Hallelujah. I was justified, and in that moment I received the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said something happened. Not only did the windows of heaven open up, and I was born again, and God saved me. He says, and then... He says, my heart and mind was filled with such joy in a psych ward. I started to pen these words. There is a fountain filled with blood flowing from Emmanuel's veins. And the sinners plunge 
Beneath the blood lose all their guilty stains. He said, The dying thief rejoiced to see the fountain in his day, and there uh, through vile as he, and though I be vile as he, uh, Jesus washed all my sins away. And ever since by faith I saw the streams and the flowing wounds supply redeeming love and has been my theme, and it shall be until I die. So William Capper penned this while he uh, was in an insane asylum back in 1771. And uh, for hundreds of years, people have been singing this song and probably hundreds of millions of people have been singing this song while locked behind men's doors. But not unavailable to God's open heaven, he penned this song that gave so many uh, a blessing. He went on to say that Satan trembles when he sees the weakest of saints upon their knees. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, you hear people all the time. You've experienced it yourself. You go in to pray and you feel like that it's hitting the ceiling, that God does not hear it. If you got an issue with prayer, the first thing to do is be obedient. Just do the best you can and know that when you do the best you can, that God's going to give increase. Just ask God, you know some people would say read a book I'd say read the Bible uh, just ask God most of the things that I've learned in life is through God showing me through his word or God showing me simply through experiences in life so I don't recommend books I recommend you do whatever you got to do to get into the presence of the Lord and find out how to pray that effectual fervent prayer because it will avail much effectual and fervent means a desired red hot effect so praise God, you ought to be able to get into prayer and move heaven with a desired red hot effect for the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much and it will give you that peace that passes all understanding that praise God, whatever you see happen, it will not shake you, it will not bring discouragement, it will not uh, cause you to be defeated, but praise God, it will cause you to be able uh, to enter into the presence of God, lift up holy hands and praising the Lord. We got to get there because times are difficult right now. And I believe that the greatest of times are coming, but praise God, until we get there, we're here. And we need God like we've never needed Him before. And we need to be crying out to the Lord God, heal our land. Lord God, forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Help us, Lord God, to be led by your Spirit, Lord God. Help us to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say unto us at any given time that we might, Lord God, redeem the times for they are evil that praise God in the midst of trouble that we might continue to be stretched, that we might continue to grow, that we might begin to take the altar, the horns of the altar and make intercession for those perhaps that are weaker, for those that are sick, for those that are not able to help themselves so that we can get those that are lost saved and bring them to the foot of the cross through our prayers and while Jesus takes care of the rest. Well, anyways, I hope this encourages you to get into His presence, praise God, and that it will cause you to get a prayer life that will shake heaven. Uh, David was discouraged, and the Bible said that he had uh, to encourage himself in the Lord. So I pray that you will take this and that you will encourage yourself in the Lord, that you will find that peace of God that passes all understanding, that praise God. God, no matter what happens until God gets this great reset over with, that we'll be able to have peace, that we'll be able, praise God, to have whatever it is that we need at any given moment because we know how to get in touch with the Father. We know how to pray that prayer that moves God. Well, anyways, I pray that you're blessed today. I hope this word helps you. I hope it encourages you. And that's all I've got. God bless you.